Okay, well, uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I'm Phil. Nice to see you. One or two familiar faces I've seen before and met before, which is really nice. So thank you very much for coming along today. I'm going to be respectful of your time. Um, by the same token, we have something really quite exciting going on, um, and it's worth spending some time on this. So I'm aiming to finish, uh, should be about an hour and a quarter, around 20 minutes, something like that. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat. If I'm not able to answer them um, during the presentation, I'll make sure that I get back to you, uh, get back to you afterwards. So I'm going to share a few slides, and we're also going to try and do a demonstration as well. Nothing like doing a live technology demonstration to keep us all on our toes. Uh, let's just get that up on the screen there. Just give me a thumbs up if you can see a slide. That would be useful. Um, good, super. Okay, so today we're going to talk about AI. Uh, it seems that everybody in the world is talking about AI at the moment, um, and it's right that we put it into context uh, in the world of financial advice and financial planning. A little bit of very brief background uh, before we crack on, just to explain why I'm doing the talking today. I've been working with financial advisors for 45 years, 20 years with providers, um, and the remaining time um, on my own as basically an independent sales, marketing and technology consultant. Um, I've presented to over a million financial advisors around the world, uh, mostly about those particular topics. They absolutely fascinate me um, because they just empower us so much within this particular profession. I think as an industry, um, I have to say, we've not made a very good job of how we promote our expertise, our credibility and skills to the public out there um, for a variety of different reasons. I mean, it's quite interesting to watch uh, how financial advisors promote themselves, how they attract new clients. Clearly, much of it comes from existing referrals and so on and so forth. But there is so much more that we can that we can do um, on the side on the technology side. I started uh, with a company called National Employers Life um, back in 1978. Uh, for those of you that know Unum, basically National Employers Life became Unum over time. Um, and uh, that uh, picture on the top right there, um, some of you, those of you that were ever with uh, Positive Solutions, you'll know that Positive Solutions was really the first um, national IFA firm slash network slash support company that really started to get to grips with technology and they entered they they brought in you know the first paperless offices um and used tablets there so tablets started taking over from laptops so i'm really been really interested in in the technology side of the business as well um i created the first online platform for financial advisors there may be one or two of you on this call today uh that had joined that and that first appeared in 1998 and then we evolved over time and the current platform that we're that we're really using is facebook i know one or two of you are members of our facebook group and if you're not in that group please come along uh, to search for advisor life talk under the groups tab on facebook and come and join us where you'll find thousands of financial advisors who are using it to network share best practice and exchange ideas and i must give a a, a quick plug for our brand new uh, newsletter which starts this week our previous newsletter about 10 years ago we had 10,000 financial advisors subscribing to that um, and we've had one or two people want us to bring that back um, so they'll start this this week you'll get the best of what's going on in the uh, Facebook group um, and you'll be able to either view the newsletter online on its own website um, or you can get it straight into your inbox as well so we'd love you to subscribe to that so we arrive at the point in time which everybody's been talking about for the last 10, 15, possibly 20 years. Um, we've been talking about AI for such a long time now and how it's going to change everything. We've not actually noticed that AI is here right now. What's really interesting when I look at conversations between financial advisors, and there was even one in our Facebook group yesterday where we refer to AI as something that's coming down the down the track um it's five ten years away and it's something that will either be a big problem or it'll be uh, really really exciting we have to get out of our heads the idea that ai is something that's going to come along in the future it is here right now the last three months have been quite extraordinary in terms of how 
AI is changing things, changing things in bad ways, which was always predicted. The genie is out of the bottle now, but also changing things very, very much for the good. And what I want to try and do is, is get a bit of balance in today as to the things that we need to be aware of, the things that we need to be cautious about, but also the quite remarkable opportunities that AI is giving us. I mean, even this week, um, we heard in the news that Jeffrey Hinton, who's retiring from Google, he was one of the, the, the people that, that kind of developed AI. And as he leaves Google, he is going out of his way to say, Google does a lot of good stuff, but we need to be aware of how much AI is going to impact every single aspect of our lives. So I want to throw that kind of balance in there and you will see more balance as we as we go forward as well. Um, what I want to talk about today is just get our heads around what actually is AI, um, what are the different ways that it's actually being used right now, and also how financial advisors can use it. And I mean right now. And one of the core messages today is, yes, please play with this technology. It's free to use, but um, actually start using it as well. Now, there are certain scenarios where you really don't want to be using it right now. You certainly don't want to be giving it client data. Um, but I want to really look at it from the point of view of how you can use AI to market and promote your expertise. Um, and, you know, I've been talking about marketing and lead gen for years and years and years to financial advisors. Uh, and I'll do a presentation, whether it's at a conference or a workshop or a webinar or something like that. Um, and people go, you know, for the, for the most part, thankfully, yeah, I enjoyed that, Phil. But I know that with the best will in the world, a lot of financial advisors have small businesses, and even though they have great intentions to market and promote themselves in different ways, they never actually get around to doing it. And one of the messages that I want to get across today is finally, we have the tools that can really, really help us to get this stuff done so that we can create more assets in our business that we can leverage to create real growth in our business and attract more of those ideal clients that, that we're really, really looking for. Now, um, about November last year, um, I, I've always been interested in photography. Um, back in my teens, I used to do rock concert photography. Um, I always wanted to be a rock concert photographer. Um, when we have finished this call today, I shall be get going onto Ticketmaster and I shall be buying my tickets um, for um, somebody wants to join us, just uh, for Judas Priest and Saxon, who will be on tour next year. Um, and I'm going to try and take lots of photos of them. So I've always enjoyed photography, but last year I discovered a couple of AI tools where I could create my own imagery. And for the last three, four months or so, I've been creating my own AI art. Now, whether we use the word art in its real um, context is, is arguably, but I've been using a couple of AI tools to create uh, things like this, which, you know, I, it's just a bit of fun. I've got an Instagram channel that um, I'm showing some of this stuff off. Um, and it's what comes out the other side is generally speaking only as good as what goes in. So literally I go to an AI tool. I use a tool called Dahl E2, D-A-L-L-E-2. And I type in what I want it to create and out comes something the other side. And then you can tweak it and adjust it and, and so on and so forth. So this is just some of the stuff that um, I've been creating. And I thought this is just a bit of fun until about a month ago where I get an email from someone saying, Phil, I like that picture um, on the bottom right. How much for me to buy it? And then about a week after that, I get an email from somebody else saying, Phil, the picture bottom left there, could I buy that picture? Could you put it on a, on a canvas or something like that? And I suddenly thought, my goodness, this is quite extraordinary. I'm just doing this for fun and I'm creating imagery that people want to buy. Um, so I'm thinking, oh, new income stream here. But, you know, it's still a bit of fun, but it is amazing what this technology can do and how it can support us as we move forward. Now, we really have, and I cannot overstate this, we really have reached a moment in an industrial revolution moment. We all know about the stories that, you know, people, they made their living in the fields. And then when the machines came along, everything changed. Um, and we really have reached that moment now in the in the world of financial advice. Now, when you all signed up for this, you answered a few questions. 
about how you're using AI or not, as the case may be. And I just want to show you some of the results of, of, of what you put in there. Question one was, do you have any plans to incorporate AI into your business? Um, most people say they're considering or they definitely are. So that's that's very positive. Are you using any AI, AI technology in your business? No. Uh, although you might be surprised to, to realize you are actually using AI in your business. You just don't know it. But I'll explain that um, in a bit in a moment. Have you explored the use of AI to support your marketing? For the most part, people are saying no. And then you remember there was a sliding scale question of how do you feel about AI from utterly terrified, which is number one, through to really, really excited, which is number 10. And we can see a broad spread of answers uh, to that particular question. So we were hearing about AI. We understand that it might be useful in our business, but we're probably not quite sure how to get started. So the concept of AI actually is, is not a new one. Um, the first um, academic conference was held in 1956. Um, the founding fathers of AI that sat around and um, started thinking about the idea that machines could possibly do some work for us. And even Alan Turing um, posed the question, I proposed to consider the question, can machines think? And that is a, a really interesting question, which is really stumping all sorts of, of different people. Basically behind AI is a lot of very clever maths that's doing a lot of predictions. Um, to try and explain how it all works is way above my pay grade. I just know how to use it. And I wanna try and share some of that with you today. So there are various definitions of, of AI, depending on where you look. Artificial intelligence, I got this straight off Google. Artificial intelligence, the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines, especially computer systems that perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. And here's the killer. The more data you give it, the more intelligent it becomes. And I want to give you some examples of that in a minute or two. So the, the thinking at the moment is we're all worried about jobs, or, or that's the way the, the press and the news want to take this. Is AI going to take our, take our jobs? And there tend to be two schools of thought around this. Yes, it will completely erase all jobs. And the other school of thought is, no, it won't replace us, but it will significantly enhance us. But again, depending on who you ask, you get different answers. PwC in a research paper said one third of all jobs could be automated by 2035. From what I've seen already, I think that's, um, I think it's going to be before that, to be quite honest. Uh, the World Economic Forum put out a paper saying 97 million new jobs will be created through AI. So depending on the way you think, the, pay, the, the attitude that you want to take to this as to what will happen. But the point I want to make is it is here now. As financial advice professionals, we cannot put our heads in the sand and think, OK, if I keep my head in the sand long enough, I might be able to get out and retire before this actually impacts us. You can use this right now in a variety of different ways. So let's have a look and see what some people actually know what they're talking about, have to say about it. Um, at its most basic, AI is software that mimics and generates human behaviors. That's an interesting way of putting it. Planning, generating ideas, understanding speech and visuals. Its ability to scale human intellect will have a profound impact. So that's one view. Ginny, former CEO of IBM, some people call this artificial intelligence, but the reality is this technology will enhance us. So instead of artificial intelligence, I think we'll augment our own intelligence. Um, this is a, a video that I would strongly urge you to go, um, go check out, look for, or go onto YouTube and search for Tristan Harris Congress testimony, uh, testimony, understanding the use of persuasive technology. And in that video, he quotes Edward Wilson, who said the real problem of humanity is the, is the following. We have a paleothic, paleothic emotions, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. It's terrifically dangerous and is now approaching a point of crisis overall. So this is, that's a really interesting way of looking at it, is that we are still basically animals that live in caves. We're just a bit more sophisticated. We've come on a bit in a variety of different ways, but we've created this technology that arguably our brains can't cope with just yet. Uh, and one more, Stephen Hawking, he knew, knew what he was talking about. 
the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. It could it would take off on its own and redesign itself in an ever increasing rate. Humans who are limited by slow biological evolution couldn't compete and would be superseded. Now, I think in any presentation where we start using words like the end of the human race, I think some of us <laughs> quite naturally might want to tune out. Uh, at that particular point. But I just want to say, put some balance in, in here as to what people are thinking about what's going on. However, there are some very, very significant advantages that come out of this. The ability now for us to do more with with, with much, much less. Um, it is amazing how uh, when the pandemic hit and we're all in lockdown, how most financial advisors managed to, to run their businesses perfectly well and they realized they could do things um, without necessarily big teams, without necessarily having to go into the office. And we found ways through it. One of the great um, things about human beings is our ability to adapt to different circumstances. So whilst there are people who have profound worries about this technology, we as humans will adapt and will adapt really quite quickly to it. Um, but we're all different, you know. And, you know, when it comes to doing more with less, here's a really interesting graph I found the other days. The number of workers needed at S&P 500 companies to generate a million dollars in revenue. And, you know, it's just gone down and down and down. Um, and we'll see by the time we finish today how you can be using it as well. Now, fund fundamentally, what we're talking about here is leveraging technology. AI is a new technology and it's up to us how we use it. The two people in the picture there are both trying to get from A to B. The person on the bike is leveraging technology. Therefore, assume that we, it's fairly safe to say that the person on the bike will get to point B before the person who is running. And that's fundamentally what we're doing. We will be able to do more and faster and more efficient with AI technology. But AI isn't like riding a bike. It's like being in a sports car compared with somebody who is on their feet and that's the kind of angle that we need to think about to assume that we are people who are not already controlled by ai um, would be wrong to suggest those of you who are on facebook or instagram or linkedin or tiktok will know perfectly well that we can go down mindless rabbit holes um for hours on end if we don't get some self-discipline on here and the example on the right of the eiffel tower is that the average TikTok user scrolls on their device three times the length or the height of the Eiffel Tower every single day. That's how much the AI and the algorithms are already controlling us. Three times the height of the Eiffel Tower every day on average. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you look at Facebook, Facebook learns what we want to look at. Instagram is particularly good at learning what we want to look at and show us more of that. LinkedIn as well. Those of you that aren't really picking up much business from LinkedIn, it's because the algorithm hasn't yet picked up what you want to see. You can train LinkedIn to show you what you want to see. So if you're a financial advisor in, say, the later life lending market or the equity release market, you can train it to show you more of what you want to see so that you can engage with people who are interested in your areas of expertise. Um, arguably, there are skills um, that there is a, like an official list of skills that can't be replaced by AI. Um, and some of these I would agree with, some of these I don't agree with at all. You would you could argue quite rightly that in a, in a lot of these things, you know, just take leadership there. Leadership is a very specific skill set. Um, I know a number of leadership experts and consultants who spend uh, every day of the week going around the world teaching leadership skills. Um, but if we go down the route that some of these skills can't be replaced by AI, we are going back into burying our heads in the sand um, territory. One of the things you can do, one of the techniques you could do with some AI um, technologies is you could say, say to it before you even ask it to do anything say i want you to imagine that you are a senior leader in a ft100 company and i want you to uh, create a staff memorandum about some big change that's going on in our business if you warm the a up 
AI up first and give it personas, tell it it's a leader, tell it an academic, position it in a certain way and then tell it to do something for you, it can come up and it, it can prove that it has got the skills um, that people begin to think that we can't actually replicate. So let's look at three different types of, of AI. Um, first of all, number one, narrow AI. Um, narrow AI is technology that does one thing really well, like a calculator. A calculator is a form of AI. It does calculations. Google search does one thing really, really well. Uh, if you do any, um, any photography or you do any pictures and you like to edit your imagery, perhaps on Instagram, um, that is one form of narrow AI. Music suggestions. I don't know any of you who are on Spotify, but I never cease to be amazed how Spotify manages to recommend to me obscure heavy metal bands that I didn't know I needed to know, uh, which I end up then following. So shopping preferences, Amazon, we've seen all this. So this is basically narrow AI. The one we're going to talk about today is generative uh, language, which we'll come on to um, in a moment. But whatever type of AI we are using, the speed of improvements um, is literally exponential. It is rapidly improving. Um, even in the last few months where we started with Chat GPT, you've probably heard of that. Uh, we had Chat GPT 3, then we had Chat GPT 3.5. Now we have Chat GPT 4. And the difference in those technologies in terms of what they can do and how well they do it are really quite extraordinary. Then we have um, the second type of AI, which is called general AI. So it's one tool that can access multiple types of narrow AI. So you may be familiar with that uh, with Alexa, uh, Siri, those kind, kind of tools, um, which you probably are already familiar with. So they're basically going to, into a bit more depth. Then we have the third type of, of AI, which, which is hasn't been named yet, but it's fundamentally um, the stuff of, that dreams are made of really quite extraordinary levels of technology but just to give you one example of, of of how it will be used in a very simple format is let's say you want to go on holiday next year you want to cruise uh, the greek islands you can go to your um super intelligent ai and say this is what we want to do next year this is roughly where we want to go and basically it will chart the route it will um, charter the boats that you want to hire it will find you stop off points it will book your flights uh, it will literally do everything for you it'll arrange the transfers between the airport and your and your yacht and so on and so forth so that's a very simplistic way of looking at it but that's that's the sort of thing that it will be able to do but clearly in other forms of uh, of business and commerce, there will be many more different things that we can do. I want to give you an example, a couple of examples for here of how the speed of this stuff has has, has changed. Um, you probably heard about the software called Deep Blue, which was programmed uh, to learn play chess and play chess and eventually beat uh, a grandmaster, in this case, Gary Kasparov. Um, and the creators of Deep Blue managed to do that. It took them eight years to 18 years to do that, where it actually beat Gary Kasparov. Uh, and, you know, that was really quite a big deal when it happened. Now, I don't know if any of you on this call actually play chess online. Um, but if you do, if you play chess online, you will be probably, unless you're playing against another person, you'll be playing against a chess bot. Uh, and usually it's a bot called Stockfish. So the creators of uh, an AI called Alpha Zero decided to try and replicate the Gary Kasparov experiment and see if they could teach Alpha Zero to learn chess and beat Stockfish. And Stockfish, there's there's no one better than Stockfish. Um, and it, they managed to achieve that in four hours. It learned chess from scratch and then beat the best chess bot in the world, literally in four hours. So that just gives you an example of the speed at which this is moving forward. And we're going to start seeing uh, AI being used in some uh, everyday activities that we know. Um, fundamentally, the main area that we'll see is improving the speed and accuracy of different diagnoses. Uh, in particular, early detection of lung cancer, early onset of Alzheimer's. Um, it can already predict whether someone is male or female just by doing an optical scan. It's going to revolutionize stroke care, and it can even predict race as well. 
um, and a whole lot more. Now, what's really interesting is some of these things like um, predicting early onset Alzheimer's, it can already do this, um, but top medical scientists are already saying they don't know how it's actually doing this. They can't figure out how the AI is actually managing to do this, but it is getting it right almost all of the time. Um, in fraud and finance, but in financial services, we're going to we're going to see AI being used in huge um, uh, amounts, particularly in, I think in the banking sector, in the trading sector. I'm just not, I'm not going to read through all of these, but you can see, um, particularly fraud. I think fraud is going to be a, a really quite a big 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 deal. Um, particularly learning from historical data to identify patterns of fraud, optimizing investment portfolios. That's an interesting one as well. Risk assessment. Um, mortgage underwriting, life assurance underwriting, it's going to be used in, in all kinds of, of different ways uh, already. More widely, day-to-day -day stuff, uh, improving traffic flow, crop yields, personalized learning. Over on Only on today's news, we heard that some uh, big educational businesses, particularly in the United States, are already reporting that profits are down because um, many students are turning to tools like ChatGPT to ask it questions instead of going to traditional learning um, tools that, th that these companies um, have been selling. So it's being used, and we're only going to see it being used a bit more. So what I want to talk about now is this, this one called generative language. You've probably heard of ChatGPT, and the GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. In other words... The software has been trained to generate language um, and it's been trained on how they did this. I have no idea. But basically, OpenAI, uh, a business in the United States, has created ChatGPT. They basically trained it on all knowledge so that when you ask ChatGPT to do something for you, it uses mathematical predictions to come up with content that you want to use. Fundamentally, though, again, like any other software that you might want to use, if you put garbage into it, you will get garbage out. So there's a whole real art, uh, which we'll talk about uh, later, on how to how to ask AI technologies to give you what you want. Uh, so ChatGPT is one of the main ones. DAL E2 is the one that I've been using for... Um, creating art, and there are a whole bunch of other ones. You've probably heard recently that Google Bard has been launched um, based on what they call Lambda, their language model for dialogue applications. That's very snappy, isn't it? But fundamentally, OA, OpenAI describe themselves as an AI research and deployment company. Their mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. Now, what's really interesting, they have already built, I think this is one of the, the main concerns that people have, is will this be used by bad actors? If you went to ChatGPT right now, and I actually had an, an IFA come up to me after a presentation I gave about a month ago and said, could I go to ChatGPT and ask it how I could commit the perfect crime? Um, and if you ask ChatGPT to do that, it won't let you do that. It won't let you uh, do quite a lot of things um, so they've already built into it uh, certain standards um, but a number of you know quite smart people are already trying to figure out ways around it um, the chat gpt api is available for anyone to use so literally every single day new tools appear i saw one today where you can use chat gpt to create things so let me give you one example financial advisors that have got um, maybe you're a slightly larger business, or maybe you've got some quite um, disciplined business processes. Um, and let's imagine, for sake of argument, that you bring on a new member of staff um, and you have certain ways of doing things. You can actually create your own chatbot based on your business processes. So you tell the 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 API, you tell the um, the AI your business processes. And then it will create a chat, chat uh, a chatbot. So you can you've then got to a point where you can ask the AI any question: How do I do this in my business, or what's the compliance process that, that we have for doing this? Ask it a question, and the AI will answer it, and it will answer it correctly. 
Um, so that's one particular way you can use open AI. So take the APIs that it uses and turn it into a tool that you could use in your own business. So generative AI fundamentally is about creating new content such as text, images, audio, video, um, and more based on data it has been trained on. And I'm going to give you some examples of this. We're going to try and do this live in just a moment. But at its most simple, let me just give you one super simple example. So I took this photo uh, a couple of months ago, frosty morning in the fields opposite here. And I uploaded this particular picture to one AI tool. And I said, create, uh, create some captions for me to post for this picture on Instagram. And it just came up with some super simple here. So it recognizes that there's two horses there. It recognizes it's a cold, frosty morning. It recognizes that the sky is blue. Winter is here, but our hearts are warm. It's a cold, beautiful morning, and there are two horses out in the car. So the AI created this. As I said, this is just super simple examples. So it's smart enough to recognize what is going on in this picture, and it's smart enough to create captions um, that are relevant to that particular picture. So we're going to have a go at that in just a moment. Now, for financial advisors, there is an absolute wealth of stuff that you could do with, um, let's let's say, ChatGPT. Um, if you want to use ChatGPT, you need to go to just search for OpenAI on Google, um, sign up with an account, uh, just use a, an email address, and then um, you'll find a link to ChatGPT. And it's free to use. Uh, there is a premium version, uh, which is about £12 a month, something like that. And it's much, much faster. And you get access to ChatGPT4 as well. But just some simple examples of things that financial advisors could do. If you like, if you use Twitter, you can use it to create tweets. You can get it to write articles, lead magnets that sit on your website, things that people can download, welcome emails. You can create client avatars. I'm always banging on about how important it is, um, particularly when you're using LinkedIn, to be absolutely clear as a financial advisor about who is your ideal client. Do you actually know who your ideal client looks like? What do they look like in detail? And you can use ChatGPT to create a client avatar that describes in detail what your ideal client looks like. Uh, you could use it to write your LinkedIn profile um, and it'll do a better job of it than we will. You can create surveys, website copy, about us profiles, um, referral letters. We're, we're going to do some of this in just a second. Just general marketing copy. Maybe you want to do a seminar uh, or a webinar. You can write the um, create the PowerPoint slides. You can create the invitation letters. You can create the website page. You can do press releases, email newsletters, all of this stuff. Um, if you want to be fancy, you can even get it to write code so you could create your own app and a whole bunch of other tools as well. Courses is an interesting one, and I just want to talk about creating courses um, in, in a minute or two. And courses can create new income streams for you. All of these things, if you put them all together, what you're fundamentally creating is assets to leverage your business, to leverage, to, to create growth in your business, to attract more of your ideal clients um, or to create more, to attract more clients. We're only limited by our own imaginations as to how we use these particular tools. But if you're a financial advisor and you do want to grow your business, you do want a few more of your ideal clients, these tools will help you to do that. And I go back to what I started saying at, right at the beginning, um, I can do all the marketing workshops in the world, but if you haven't got the time, you haven't got the inclination, you haven't got the resources, you probably won't get it done. Finally, we've got tools that will help us to get this stuff done and get it done in literally no time at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come out of the presentation for a moment. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing that screen and I'm going to share another screen. And we'll have a look at this stuff in action. Okay, so we're inside ChatGPT. Let's see what we can do. It can do some really sophisticated and very complex uh, material, but let's keep it easy uh, just to start with. So let's create a tweet.
Meet three tweets for a financial planner who is promoting his or her business in London. Nice and simple. Let's see what it can do. And there we go, straight off the bat. Are you looking for expert financial advice to help you achieve your goals? Look no further. Our London-based financial planning team is here to help you take control. Are you tired of feeling stressed about your finances? Uh, this is all good stuff, and it even includes the hashtags as well. Um, now, I'd argue that's a little bit too formal. Um, make these uh, less formal and include some humor. Again, straight away, you can see what it's done. It's included some emojis in there. Again, we've got our hashtags. Want to be like Scrooge McDuck and swim in a pool of gold coins. So, you know, it's a little bit over the top. The point is, though, that, is that you come up with the ideas, you create something, and you keep tweaking it, uh, tweaking it uh, to make it right for you. Okay, so uh, one of the things I'm always going on about is the importance of financial advisors having a lead magnet on their website. In other words, something of value that maybe a visitor can download, uh, an e-guide, an e-book even, something like that. So why don't we, maybe we're going to do, uh, we want a, a, an e-guide and let's aim it at, let's say, um, heart surgeons. Um, so if maybe heart surgeons are visiting your website, an e-guide that they could download will certainly be of value to them. Uh, but let's, before we even write it, let's ask ChatGPT to um, create the chapter titles. could include on their website and aim the guide at heart surgeons nearing time. Okay, let's see what it comes up with. There you go. In a flash, aiming for a smooth landing, financial planning for heart surgeons approaching retirement, evaluating your financial health, retirement income strategy. So this could form the basis. Let's let's add some more. Um, absolutely perfect. So now what we could actually do is ask it to just go ahead and write the write the guide as well. But again, you can change any of this to to suit you. Um, maybe we're doing a, a seminar uh, in our local area and we want to put the presentation together. Um, you know, normally you could do that, probably take you two or three hours to put something together properly. But why don't we uh, ask it to write the PowerPoint slides for a financial advisor who specializes in equity release who is uh, who is hosting a local seminar let's have uh, 12 slides there we go we've got our title slide uh, with your name, we've got introduction, introduce yourself and your company, explain what expertise, understanding it, eligibility for advantages, risks of equity release, exploring your options, lifetime mortgages, home reversion, that's interesting. Um, again, we're just creating the base here. You take out what you don't want or what isn't relevant uh, and you add in whatever it is you like. So again, uh, pretty important, pretty good. So maybe you want to build some relationships with local accountants. Write a letter from a financial planning firm in Leeds who wants to uh, build relationships with local accountants. Um, hint that the idea is to build mutually boarding relationships over the long term. Let's see what it comes up with. And what's amazing is the speed that it that it does this. It's extraordinary. Right to you today because we're interested in building a relationship with your firm. We're a little bit to the point. Uh, we're a financial planning firm based in Leeds, and we believe that working together could benefit both of our businesses. 
when I say the accountants like yourself are often first point of contact for clients, blah, blah, blah. We'd like to invite you to a meeting. We understand that building a strong relationship takes time and effort, but we're committed to investing in the process. Uh, so it's nice and professional. Um, maybe that might not be your uh, your tone. So we could just say, um, make this letter less formal. And straight away, you can see immediately the tone uh, has changed absolutely straight away. What do you say? Are you interested in meeting up to chat more about this? We'd love to grab a coffee or a drink and so on and so forth. Let's try this one. Write a welcome email to a new client couple who have recently come on board for lifestyle financial planning. Make them feel welcome and encourage them to ask questions at any time. Also, hint that introductions to family and friends are always welcome. Let's see what it comes up with with this. And so fast, it's unbelievable. I hope this finds you well. I'm delighted to welcome to our financial planning family and excited to start working with you on your needs. At the outset, I want to emphasize that we're here to support you and your family in every way possible. Once so that financial planning will be overwhelming. Uh, as we embark on this journey together, we'd love to learn more about your unique lifestyle aspirations and financial goals. We also understand that finance is an important part of our personal lives, which is why we welcome introductions to your family and friends. Uh, we believe that everyone welcomes the opportunity to make informed decisions, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for trusting us with the offer. I think it's a potentially extremely good letter. Again, one of the points I want to get across with this is that you, the financial advisor, are using tools like this to bake the cake. Uh, what you then do is you take what has been made and you add the icing, add your own spin to it, add your own tone, add in things uh, that we can't expect ChatGPT to know, take out bits that you don't want. So that's uh, that's quite impressive. I, uh, I really like this one. Okay, let's, um, let's, we've sponsored the local football team. So let's uh, write a press release to your local paper, the... Uh, call it the County Times, um, highlighting that your financial planning business and, and co financial planning are now sponsoring the local under in your old football team. Let's see what it comes up with there. Uh, it's got the date, it's got the can size of its sponsorship as a local business are committed to supporting our community, investing in its future. We understand the importance of promoting physical activity and team sports for children. That's really good. Uh, uh, even a quotation we're thrilled to support local 15 said your name. Uh, we believe in encouraging children to stay active and promoting a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely fantastic. And sponsorship is a great way of giving back to the community. Sponsorship will include financial support of the teams, expenses, equipment, uniforms, travel were great, uh, full. And so the head coach has even given a quote as well. Grateful to Jones and Co for their generous support. Uh, absolutely. And a bit about you and your business website URL. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. Really, really good indeed. So you can see there um, how this is this is really working well. And I gave it minimal information at the beginning there. Um, you know, I could write several paragraphs of information about what we're doing, and it would take that. But even for, for that, even with a spelling mistake in there, it, it still works really well. Uh, so let's do uh, a couple more things. Let's do something a little bit more ambitious. Um, we are a firm of financial planners. Let's just spell that correctly. Specializing in um, the financial plans of dentists in the Bristol area. We are just getting started, but um, one of our team 
all advisors used to be a dentist. Um, create a uh, brand branding document and marketing plan using the AIDA, that's Attention, Interest, Desire, Action formula. Um, let's, let's leave it at that, see what it comes up with. So the unique change dentist face, marketing plan, attention, our marketing efforts will focus on creating awareness among dentists in the Bristol area. The interest to generate interest amongst dentists will highlight the unique challenges faced by dental professionals. Desire to offer our services, emphasize the benefits of working with us. Action to encourage action with our brand audience. In summary, our marketing plan will focus on creating awareness among dentists in the Bristol area. That's interesting. Let's just, let's really push this, see what happens. Suggest some ideas for our logo and wider branding. Let's see how it comes up with that. On the dental theme, you can incorporate dental tools or elements such as a toothbrush and the outline of a tooth. You use the Bristol skyline, your logo design, play with colors. Consider bright colors in your logo, use images of people, keep it simple. And see, this is this is pretty good considering how little information that we've given it. It knows we're in Bristol, it knows we're new, it knows we're focusing on dentists, yet it still manages to, uh, to come up with something like that. Okay, so one uh, final thing for today. Uh, why don't we, um, well, actually, just two more things. Write a short blog on the importance of lifestyle financial planning for dentists. Again, let's keep it short, see what it comes up with. This is an interesting one. Lifestyle financial planning is the process of developing a comprehensive financial plan that is tailored to your unique goals uh, needs, goals, and values. It takes into account not only your current financial situation, but your long-term retirement, education, funding, estate planning. This is your lifestyle aspirations, such as travel, hobbies, and philanthropy. Uh, as a dentist, your income, career path are unique. Uh, or the lifestyle financial plan place, you can take a proactive approach, blah, blah, blah. Pretty good stuff, yeah. Uh, and let's do one more thing, and let's just keep the, keep the dental theme going. Um, and it's, it's interesting in this long thread, it now knows, excuse me, that we're working with, that we are financial planners. It knows where we're based. It knows that we've got a leaning towards dentists and the, uh, results that it give us will just get better and better as we go by. So let's just do one thing. Maybe younger dentists actually don't want to go and see a financial planner. So why don't we see if we can create a new income stream? Let's create a course, uh, create a financial planning course uh, that we can uh, promote and sell on our website uh, that on our website the course should be comprehensive and aimed at uh, helping young dentists and those in the early stages of their career to fully educate themselves. Again, we could really and should go into a lot more detail on that. I'm going to leave the spelling mistakes in there. Uh, write the headings for a course with, let's say, 12 modules. Let's see what it comes up with. I mean, that's extraordinary how quickly it comes up with that. Uh, financial planning for young dentists, a comprehensive course to build your financial future. Module one, understanding your financial land, the financial landscape, managing your debt, student loans beyond, being a strong financial foundation, budgeting and saving, investing for your retirement, understanding your options. So obviously uh, this is uh, focusing more on the UK, on the US market, but we can uh, change that. Protecting your income, so planning, tax planning for dentists, wealth transfer, building your practice, that's an interesting bit, navigate practice transitions, balancing it all together, uh, putting it all together, create your personalized plan. So let's just 
choose one of them. Uh, let's choose module three. Um, write the video script for module three. And it's so it's interesting. So um, it's even giving a sort of director um, video shots, opening shot of a young dentist walking into their office. Welcome to module three. Cut to a shot of a budgeting spreadsheet and a computer screen as a young dentist. So it's giving us it's giving us the the sort of camera setups as well. Um, and it's also getting what the narrator would actually say. So you could do this yourself. Um, let's I don't know what we'll do. Let's write the script for this module, but without the video. And there we have it straight away. Um, let's see how much goes. So that's, that's quite a short one. You can obviously ask it to write a bit more. We can ask it to expand. Um, as a young tendency, you may have significant student loan debt. So let's ask it to uh, expand on paragraph two. And so on and so forth. Again, it's got focus on the on the US market, but you you get where I'm going with this. So, you know, any financial advisor could create a course in a matter of minutes using uh, technology like this. It could be a video course. It could be an audio course. Uh, you could have this on your website. You could put it on a website like Udemy and other places where you can sell courses. But the point I'm trying to make is, um, and I've been talking about this for years, the importance of financial advisors actually doing some of this stuff. Because when you do this stuff, you will attract more of the right sort of clients and you can even create new income streams. But, you know, with the best will in the world, a lot of financial advice businesses are quite small. They don't have the time. They don't have the inclination or perhaps the budget. But using a tool like this, you can create fantastic content really quickly with little effort. This gives you the base. This gives you the cake. And then you do the icing. So I hope you found that useful. Um, got any questions? Let me know. So this interesting, this software um, gives you the opportunity to do all sorts of different things as a financial advisor. Um, you could write a book with this. You can write um, courses. You can create your own software. You can it can you can create financial coaching consultant. You can do all kinds of different things by using this particular. Um, technology. Let me just give you an example of courses. I know that there are quite a few financial planners um, who want to, who, will, who tell me that they're starting to think about getting into slightly younger markets, um, or they want to be able to offer services for clients they wouldn't normally work with, but they know that those particular markets are out there. Now, one of the, you could do this is to create your own course. If you go to a website like Udemy and you type in financial planning, you'll find that there are over seven and a half thousand courses related to financial planning. And here's just one of them here. Um, it tells you what you're going to learn. It says there are three and a half hours of on-demand video, downloadable resources. It's got um, pretty high ratings, 13, uh, almost five-star ratings um, from 82 students. Um, now, you could use AI to create these courses. Here's another one. Um, someone's charging uh, 18 pounds for this one. Learn and apply everything you need to know in one-on-one -on -one virtual experience with a multi-award winning financial planner and coach. 42 ratings, almost all of them um, five star, 184 people have done this. Um, really quite interesting. Get our debt proven plan for debt-free personal finances. Um, again, people have actually created this themselves with videos, but you could now use uh, chat gpt and other ai software to actually do this for you so one of the things you could do is you could go to chat gpt and you could type in i want to create a course um, on personal finance um, give me the module titles and it will do that in literally in a flash in no time at all then you can say write the text for each of those modules and it will do that your it'll do it straight away um, now what i want you to think about this is the stuff that ChatGPT and the AI creates is really baking the cake. What you as the financial advisor are doing, you're then putting the icing on the cake. So you want to go through what it's created, um, change it to your style, your language, take things out, 
Uh, some of it is quite American, but if you tell it in advance, I want to create a course for consumers in the UK uh, between certain ages, it will make sure that it that it comes out that it's relevant to the UK market. Um, here's another one as well. Best personal finance course, everything you need to know. Um, it's by the same person. Now, it's not perfect. So whatever it produces, you want to check the facts, but it's it remarkably uh, accurate in terms of what it can actually do. But what you could do, if I just go back a slide, is if you want some thought, go to a website like Udemy and search for personal finance related courses and just see what other people have done in the past. Um, and it will give you some ideas. Um, and then go to ChatGPT, it will create the course. Now, um, you can then record yourself doing it, or there's uh, AI software that will use uh, a human-like avatar that will be speaking on your behalf on the video as well. So if you don't want to actually record it yourself with you on video or with your voice, you can get voices and you can get avatars to actually do it for you. Um, there's a whole bunch of different resources um, that are out there. We talked about ChatGPT. Um, there are literally there's something new coming out every single day. Now, I've got a separate uh, best practice AI best practice group for financial advisors where we list these out, particularly the things that are particularly relevant. I'm not going to go through these now, but when you get the uh, slides, uh, just just go through them, try them out. Most of them give you a free period uh, to to give them a go. You'll also find there's a, a remarkable number of, uh, if you use Google Chrome, there are Chrome extensions uh, that you can use. So for example, if you go to, uh, if you've got a, a chat GPT Chrome, in a Chrome extension, you could go to say YouTube. And if there's a particular video that you're interested in on a particular topic, you can press a button and chat GPT will watch the video for you and summarize it for you in bullet points. So extraordinary time-saving um, capabilities that it has. You can get it, you can plug it into your email software. It will write emails for you. Um, as I said, we are only limited by our own imaginations as to what it can actually do for us. Um, I only put this slide in this morning because um, this new tool called usechatgpt.ai was launched today. It is a Google Chrome plugin, um, and you can get it to read websites for you. Um, you can get it to read things and explain it for you. It can read articles. So maybe you like to look at uh, the money marketing website or any other industry website, but you haven't got time to read a particular article. You can get a tool like this to read it for you and give you a really quick summary as well. Um, it'll make you a better writer as well. Uh, you can write a particular email. You can then ask it to make it more professional, more casual, more straightforward, more confident, more friendly. You name it, it will get it to do it. It'll fix grammar. Um, extraordinary. What it can Reply to any text. And this, this came out today. Um, so brand new stuff all the time. Um, you can integrate it with Google as well. So this is, a, I've got a chat GPT plugin. And if I type in financial planners in Guildford, I get the normal Google search results on the left, but on the right-hand side, ChatGPT gives me its own view of it as well. Now, um, I did this particular one, I don't know if it's got a date, uh, about two months ago, but I've redone this same search recently, and it's interesting to see how ChatGPT has changed its output. So previously, it was showing me SJP, Investec, Hargraves, Landown, and all the rest of it, but it's learnt... And it's now giving me some different text on the right as to well. And there is no question, and I'm already doing this myself, um, Google now feels a bit like um, Yellow Pages used to feel. Yes, Google still has very much has it. Google search very much has its place. Uh, no question about that. But ChatGPT just kind of brings it to life. I also now find myself using Bing, which is um, Microsoft's um, search engine. I'm using that a whole lot more. Bing used to be really, really clunky, uh, but Microsoft has recently invested billions and billions into AI. Um, so you can now get an AI result by using Bing. So I typed in uh, benefits of financial planning, and this is what Bing produced for me. 
uh, really quite interesting the approach it's taken there, the answers it's giving me. Financial plans provide a, uh, a guide for action decision making. Financial planning has additional emotional and health benefits. Who'd have thought that it would come up with results like that? Um, so being really, really powerful as well, use it. Now, I mentioned earlier that garbage in, garbage out, and there is a whole new thing that you didn't know you needed to know about called prompt engineering. Um, and prompt engineering is the art and science of asking the AI what you want it to do. Um, I'm going to send you all uh, an e-guide afterwards um, of um, about 100, I think there's almost 200 prompts, things, literally instructions that you can give ChatGPT to help you create uh, stuff that you want. So you have to give it really, really clear, specific instructions. Um, and you could even you could maybe write a blog yourself on a particular topic, copy and paste it into ChatGPT and say, make this better or rewrite this, make it more humorous or make this more professional or aim this article at heart surgeons. So things like write the outline for, write a sales message. What are some great research topics about planning your retirement income? Give me 10 video ideas that could help me summarize, elaborate on and so on and so forth. Um, the art of prompt engineering is really, really powerful. And the better you get at prompt engineering, the better the results and the more efficient this particular tool will be for you. And there's one particular thing I asked it to do the other day. And I said, uh, imagine you are four different types of financial planner. Um, each financial planner markets their services in different ways. Um, ask those financial planners to discuss amongst themselves what is the best way to attract new leads and agree the best way to attract new leads. And I asked it to do that. Um, and it came up with four different ways to generate leads. Then it said, we all agree as financial planners, the best possible way to attract new leads is teach your clients how to refer and introduce their friends to you. So it can do some quite extraordinary things. In terms of the immediate future, um, you're going to see every newspaper, every website, particularly industry articles talking about um, AI, how you can use it. Um, there will be real advantage for early adopters. Now, if you ignore AI, that will be a problem. If you are worried that AI will take over your job, that will be a problem. The financial advisors, though, who take the time to learn about AI, stay on top of it, they are the ones that will have the real advantage over those that don't. Um, and it could be in really simple ways like creating AI-based chat, chat bots that sit on your website that enable people to ask questions. Um, it's easy for me to see, sit here and say, create your own chat, chat bot. If you're interested in how to do that, uh, we're talking about that in our AI group as to how you can do that. But what I'm saying is um, AI will be a problem for the financial advisors that choose to ignore it, but the ones that choose to use it in some way, shape or form as part of their business, they will really, really benefit from it. So here we go. AI won't disrupt your business just yet, but other advisors using it will probably disrupt your, your business if you ignore it. One thing I would think about doing it is, if you do have a team, is to start introducing this to people in your in your business. Um, start making uh, AI part of your discussions, your team meetings. Um, I would argue having an, uh, an AI champion in your business. Um, look at AI as having a new free member of staff. Um, if you aren't the person who is responsible for championing AI in the business, you might want to you know, just think about having somebody else in your business champion AI, somebody who may who keeps an eye on what's going on in the world of AI as it impacts financial advisors, and then reports to you every week or every month so that you just you're conscious of what's doing. Because I'm conscious, you know, you've got a business to run in the meantime, you've got clients to service, you've got all the stuff that you are passionate about doing. Um so get somebody else to do, to do this for you, but just be aware of what is going on because 
one of the things about technology is it does have a habit of creeping up behind us and kicking us in the backside really hard when we're least expecting it. So if nothing else, just be on top of it and be aware of it. Next steps, I would argue, start using it. Yeah, um, play around with it. You can do it on your mobile. You can use it pretty well anywhere. Just learn about it. Learn about it at a high level. There's some very, very techy stuff if, if that's your thing. Factor it into those team meetings. Have somebody in your business who's responsible for reporting to you. Just start that process of getting on top of it and know what's know, know what's going on. Look for best practice. But to say thank you for you guys for coming on today, I'll make sure you get a copy of this video. As I said, I also have a separate video that I've done um, which shows you ChatGPT in action. Sorry it didn't work today, but um, I'll show you that. Uh, I'll get make sure you get a copy of the guide. I'll send you a copy of these marketing prompts. So it's literally one-liners that you can use with ChatGPT that will help to create content uh, content for you. Um, we've also got an AI best practice group, um, which I really want to get a plug in for. Uh, we've got financial advisors who really want to be on top of this. And in that group, you'll be able to network with other financial planners who use AI, share how you're using it, exchange resources, uh, point to uh, best practices, participate in discussions, uh, access to re resources, and get notifications about. There's usually something new in there every single day. It's seven pounds a month, uh, free for a week, so you can just try it out, see what's going on in there. Uh, you can either join straight away or just register your interest. Um, and if you go to that particular link there, uh, AI dash best dash practice for advisors. Uh, you can find out more information about that. Um, we also do a consultant session where we look at how you can use AI in your particular business in a variety of different ways. Um, thanks for coming along today. Uh, we'll finish a little bit uh, sooner than we thought. I just got a couple of questions. Let's just see uh, where we go. Uh, that's great. Hope you found it useful. Um, and um, we'll see you again another time. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.